Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. It is the weekend, which means I'm doing another one of my Naval Architect scenarios. Naval Architects are patrons who get to send in a scenario per month and it gets voted on by the rest of the patrons, and that way you can get your scenario turned into a video. Today's scenario is sent in by Black Knights. It has quite the war story behind it. Now, um, it's a fictional universe, so just uh, suspend your disbelief. A war enveloping over half the planet has declared has been declared as two giant superpowers battle it out for supremacy and subjugation. Your homeland, an island nation, the Republic of Lufiz, is rather large and isolated landmass with a sea on all four sides. However, due to the only industries being mining and coastal cities, it is rather underpopulated and not very industrialized. Academics and wealth fled the island well over the past few years due to rising escalations elsewhere. You have managed to stay sovereign due to your free trade philosophies, so while the economy is booming and ships frizzed frequently, uh, you've been tiptoeing the international political lines to avoid being directly engaged. After two years of war, one of the giants decides to take a bold move. Your State Department receives a phone call from the deck of a small ocean trader with disturbing news. They are being diverted due to safety concerns from their home office. Within a few uh, weeks, a foreign fleet is picked up on the coastal sonar array, giving your nation the time to, it needed to pull the coastal fleets together. The State Department contacts uh, panned out and the other superpower alliance managed to send, out, or send eight of two modern battlecruisers. You will take what we can get, but it was a little weird they were close enough to respond in time. So, summary, uh, we have two superpowers in the world and we are just a small island nation trying to fend for ourselves. The scenario, thereby, is called Attack from a Giant. We are David and Goliath is coming after us. Fortunately, I have attack advantage. But, there is a bit of a caveat. I'm going to get to that after um, I read my, well, sort of own captain's log that was also submitted by Black Knights. I've recently been promoted from captain of a coastal defense fleet to the Admiral of the Republic Sea Fleet. Needless to say, this was just a title promotion after the reports of the first major battles between the superpowers were stalemates. Secret meetings were held and with the influx of wealth being taxed as part of their refugee agreements. The Republic authorized the doubling of the coastal fleets with no expense spared type approach. One caveat, our largest dry docks were only designed for 10,000 tons displacement ships for regional trade ships manufacturing. But I'll be damned, we built eight of those suckers in no time, and the suckers that he refers to are the coastal protection ships. All those war refugees put in day and night work, uh, and some even brought fancy new technologies with them. And that is why I have this 1940 tech advantage over the Chinese. Here comes the caveat. I can only build ships with a displacement of 10,000 tons, as that is the maximum of my fleet, or the maximum of my dry docks. Uh, second caveat, those battle cruisers that I mentioned earlier, those were coming in to assist from the other major power. I can't control them. The battle cruisers must be placed on AI for the duration. Yes. Um, the enemy is going to get 12 transports as per the requirement of this scenario. And uh, as long as I don't have to get any transports and command any transports, perfect. Wind condition. Sink 100% of the enemy ship's combat ships or 75% of all combat ships and transports. Losses, um, you lose if the enemy sinks 100% of your ships. Every ship you have surviving will be passed on to the next campaign scenario. And this is going to be a total of three scenario campaign. So it's going to be a mini-series, if you will. That depends, of course, on whether the next scenario from Black Knights also get voted into a, uh, into a video. And if you want to do voting, you can do so by supporting me on Patreon. Link down below in the description. So... I get to design a light cruiser, and I have to take on six battleships and six heavy cruisers, effectively with eight light cruisers. Yikes. Uh, the two battle cruisers I'm going to consider an absolute wild card. I cannot design them, and I cannot control them. So they are just, well, target practice maybe for the battleships. 
As far as I'm concerned, maybe they might as well not be there. So, we're designing... Um, well, effectively, the, 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 yeah, the modern light cruiser, because I cannot design anything else. Uh, let's see. Considering that they have some larger ships, I think my best bet here is torpedoes. Just to make sure that I can do the damage that I'm going to require. Aside from that, maneuverability, uh, smoke screens, and staying at range will be my largest perks. Trying to defend against their firepower, surely with armor on a light cruiser, is suicide. It simply won't do. So I'm going to have to come up with a torpedo-heavy boat. Um, let's go with a modern tower 2. Secondary rear tower. Funnel. Engine efficiency is currently 100. And that's with a speed of 33.5 knots. Okay. Let's not fire Lidites, unless I want to blow myself up. We are going to need some main guns. And I'm thinking something along the lines of a 6-inch gun. Because it's, well, it's more of a fallback option than anything really serious. Because the majority of my firepower is going to come out of my torpedo tubes. And I want to be capable of sending out large waves of torpedoes. So we're going to go with an increased complement of torps. And uh, probably quad launchers. Just several of them. And by doing this, I intend to flood out the enemy as quickly as I can. So this gives me 20 torpedoes per side. We have 16 torpedoes per launcher. So this should give me enough ammunition to keep these guys uh, torpedoing for quite a while. I still have 700 tons left. Now, because I think it's going to look better, I'm going to add a few more turrets. Again, these 6-inch guns are, well... They're more of a distraction than anything else. They're really not going to win any prizes, uh, nor do any serious damage. The enemy does not have any destroyers, which is going to work rather well for me. And um, it is what I'm counting on to just forego any kind of a secondary armament. I don't feel like I need that. Four weight offset 0.1%. There we go. Reload time on these things is 600 seconds. So, 10 minutes. i got to make these torpedoes count. All right. Anything else that I would like? Um, I'm not going to upgrade the reloads. I'm not going to upgrade the turrets. Because I don't need that. Radio. Um, I'm not even sure who is going to be considered the lead ship. I think one of my light cruisers will be considered the flagship. But I'm not sure. This is... <sighs> It's fairly heavy. A radio telegraph is going to cost me 270 tons. What the hell are you receiving on that? Is that Netflix or something in 1940s? No, thank you. A bit more speed might keep the ship safer. Because, as you might have seen in previous videos, target fast speed is something that really throws off your aim. So 36 knots. Uh, torpedo range is 14.8. Let's set that to electrics. It's going to sacrifice 15% range and some speed, but also boosting accuracy and detection range. Well, sort of, in the sense that the enemy does not get any warning. This means that the accurate range, or sorry, the effective range is 12.7, which is not great because it means I have to risk my light cruisers. But at the same time, I think it's the better option. Um, I could go for 13.2. But I would have to sacrifice my speed again. Uh, I don't want to do that. If I go for 18 inches, the range is a mere 12. And the damage is 329. 868. Now, my plan is to hit the enemy fleet with as many torpedoes as I can muster. And considering that I have eight of these light cruisers, I can throw about 160 torpedoes in a salvo. If the AI doesn't change course too much, I could inflict a whole lot of flooding and immediately sink one of their ships. And preferably several. So that's the plan. This is the Enfernet. Let's see if she can, well, win this fight against Goliath. Uh, 
And that right there is the kind of damage that I'm looking for. Hold. All right, the battle cruiser, uh, Levret and Clemenceau. Maximum bulkheads, I like it. But why on earth did you put nine-inch guns on a battle cruiser? Good lord, that's atrocious. Nine-inch guns? <sighs> They're fucking fast as well. <laughs> They built some sort of super-sized light cruiser and put it on steroids. <laughs> Holy shit. 44 knots? That's that's way faster than my light cruisers. Uh, I know I give the AI a lot of shit for their designs, but sometimes they just really make some fun stuff up. Alright, my light cruisers, whatever formations. I want two fours. So you get to join Div 4 over here. Uh, the AI is going to get control of the battle cruisers or the light cruisers on steroids, uh, which for this scenario <laughs> might just work. I don't know. And then we have Hello, which will be heavy cruisers by any chance, with 7 inch guns, just a lot of them. And then their battleships. Oh dear. 9 17 inch guns. I don't want to know what these things can do against a battle cruiser, but I think I'm going to find out regardless. Oh shit, now they're all fused together. I didn't mean to drag them over each other and create one big div. Detach. Uh, you're the lead. Join div 7. Check. You are now div 7 still. Join div 7. And there was one over here to the side. Join Div 7. Check. Okay, that's the first group. You are Div 2. Join Div 2. Join Div 2. And join Div... There. Alright. All of you, don't fire a single torp. I just want to know what the range is. 15. Crap. They are moving away from me. Uh, the range on these 9-inch guns is 17. So... They should be capable of hitting the heavy cruisers. Whether they're capable of doing anything else remains to be seen. At least I might not die upon the first salvo that they take. Alright, I want one group to go... Starboard. Yeah, the other group's also going to have to turn to starboard. Otherwise, we won't be able to get close to the enemy fleet. Alright, let's go. Battle cruisers opening up. I cannot control them, but I can sort of see what they're up to. But with a turning circle of a kilometer and a half, it's going to take them a while before they complete that turn, if ever. Oh, wow, they've already inflicted some damage. That's fast. Even my six-inch guns <laughs> are doing a partial pen. Oh, beautiful. Clemenceau is on fire. Really? You guys are throwing me off course quite a bit here, boys. Hold on a moment. Oh, you're still trying to complete your turn. Shit. Okay, fine. Now, the heavy cruisers are not really what I consider the biggest threat. Because they... Well, they got those 7-inch guns. It's not going to be pretty when they do damage against the light cruisers. But at the same time, I'm thinking that the battleships with their 17-inch guns are far more threatening. So I'm hoping that my battle cruisers can do some damage against them. Uh, no, I want you guys over here. But then again, I carry 162 torps, which is enough for 8 salvos. So there is definitely quite a lot of torpedo power in these boats. Let's see. Identification 30%. I want to know what sort of flooding capability or counter-flooding they have. Now, as I've learned in the Taskmaster Tuesday vid, uh, if your engines are out, your pumps are out. I mean, it makes so much sense, but I never considered it, so that was just entirely my fault. 
I was blaming the game on having AI with some sort of superior anti-flooding capability. But really, it was just my sheer stupidity for not realizing that. So I apologize to the game. Uh, all of you, target that ship. Target the lead heavy cruiser. I did, by the way, reach out to the devs and said that the formation system really needs to change. And they said, yeah, we're aware. Um, when a ship is tasked with forming a screening force around something else, they tend to mess up with their formation. So that is exactly what we have seen happen. That's exactly why ships seem to be stuck in place. You might want to get a move on. Not sure exactly why you're only doing 16 knots, but it's a bit light. Engine efficiency was good on these light cruisers, so they shouldn't have an issue accelerating. The heavy cruisers are behaving exceptionally unpredictable, which is not what I want for my targets. Especially not if I'm considering throwing torpedoes in their face. I'm not even sure if the AI knows what they're doing. Like, what are you trying to pull here? Who's your lead? They're just sort of circling? I guess? I'm just going to send a torpedo salvo their way and see what happens. Yeah, even the torpedo launchers are going. I don't know what to target now. Look at this mess. What are you doing? What's your plan? I mean... We're just sort of... Playing ring around the rosies or something? Nope. Whole battle lines just refusing to launch their torps. Interesting. Are they falling back? Oh, we have ID on them. Minimum bulkheads. Excellent. Anti torp 4. Okay. Uh, Aux 4 engine. That's not really what I was hoping to see because it's going to really aid them in their defense against any kind of flooding. Um. Anti-flood 1 only. Heavy shells, increased ammo, lit I 2. These things are a flash fire waiting to happen. So if I can hit them with a torpedo, there is a chance that I'll actually cause a flash fire. Not a large chance, but a chance nonetheless. Go aggressive. Get those torpedoes in the water. Oh, the Circe already f launched hers. And there's the Enfernet. Hold on. Where are... There they are. There's the swarm. What sort of sonar do you guys bring? Sonar 2. Not terrible. Off. Um, we're going to just harass some transports here. How's that other div doing? Fairly well. They're finally outside of the battle cruiser's uh, interference. So I can bring these boys back. Interestingly, both the battle cruisers have not really been damaged at all. Is that reduced ammo? Oh my god. You also brought reduced ammo? You already have 9 inch guns. Why are you bringing reduced ammo? Like, what are you even hoping to achieve here? this is just not really going to be an effective battle cruiser. This is what I meant when I said that these things are wild cards. You just have no idea what they'll throw at you. Oh, you got hit pretty bad, didn't you? By six inch guns? Okay. I can pen these? Well, somewhat. That torpedo salvo doesn't look good against the uh, Shang-Chi. But maybe against the Sichuan if she keeps turning. Let's just piss off some transports here. 
One group that way, and we might be able to sneak up on the battleships. Few bulkheads, anti-torp one, orcs two, anti-flood three. All right. Nah, no, those torps are not going to hit anything. There's another heavy cruiser there, the Fang Chian. These battleships are only doing 24 knots, so I can easily murder all their transports. And then run up to the battleships. And, and I don't mean at 5 kilometer range like I sometimes do, but at a bit more of a distance. And still ensure that I have the fight that I need, or the, the range that I need to stay, hopefully outside of their secondaries. Their secondaries are only 3 inch, though. So it could be far, far worse. Have they even seen the Torps? Yeah, they did. Sichuan and Jiyuan have both taken some flooding, but they're working on getting rid of it soon. I really need these battle cruisers to kill off the heavies. Come on, guys. Take a bit more damage than that, will you? One of their transports is doing very poorly. Calissonier, why are you doing 12 knots? Hello. You can easily do more than that. You're in a loose formation. You have zero reason not to speed up. If I detach you, guess what's going to happen? Boom! Acceleration happens. All right, Enfernet, you are trying to speed up, sort of. Detach. Uh, the Enfernet and the Galissonnière are going to be a new div. Normal formation. Normal formation. These six-inch guns might not do anything against the heavy cruisers, but they can do wonders against those transports. Oh shit, you're targeting a light cruiser? Are you kidding? Who are you targeting? You're targeting the battle cruiser, but this one's targeting my light cruiser. With a mere chance of 0.1% to try and hit. Or to land a hit. Okay, Galissonnière and Enfernet are increasing speed. What about the Sears? Sears say 32 knots. Very good. I'm going to slow uh, the lead ship down here a bit to have the other one catch up to it. Two transports down. Ten more to go. And meanwhile, these torpedoes are still going. I thought that would be way out of range, but... Yeah, they shouldn't have that kind of range. Nevertheless, if they can accidentally hit and potentially flood an enemy battleship, it'll be a far easier prey. Looks like the enemy is also suffering from some formation issues here. Because this battleship is taking its sweet time to maneuver anywhere. I don't mind. Here's the other group. Let's go to three or two times speed. Oh shit, those things are really deadly. Standard complement of bulkheads. That was just a couple of hits. Five, eight, 568 and 158 for an overpen. Now the objective is sink 75% of all combat ships and transports. So if I can butcher all the transports, then I can win by ensuring a couple of kills on the heavy cruisers and maybe some of the battleships. That'd be great. So I'm just letting my light cruisers rip right through these transports. And hope that the other guys, the heavy cruisers, are going to be knocked out by the battle cruisers. Oh shit. You got a bit too close there. Um, you are line three. Good lord, what are you doing? Target this one. The Pluton. What's your speed? 21.6. 6. 
It is not just with a screening force, is it? Because these guys too are starting to get seriously wrecked. Because they're not using their speed properly. Come on. Pop out those torpedoes. Target Liaoning. I don't need a torpedo the G1. And now the light cruisers are accelerating. Uh, your div 6, join div 6. Now the transport bites the dust. This one took a bit of a hit, but seemingly no flooding. Or at least it's under control. And the other, the Pluton. Why do you have to start turning aggressively the moment that my torpedoes hit the water? They don't even know that there are torpedoes out there. There goes another transport. These guys are wrecking the transports, and the battleships are not doing much to counter it. Let's smoke up, because you are attracting some fire from, I think, a heavy cruiser here. Just let these guys work, because this is far more interesting. And far more deadly. Look at these torps! These heavy cruisers are so unpredictable. How am I going to land a torpedo kill on that? If ever. Uh, can you safely join Div 3 without mucking up? These things just keep doing complete course reversals. And thereby throwing off any torpedo solution that I might have had. Torpedoes away from the Pluton. The other div is over there, and then we got the div there, and then we got the Sfax and the... What is that? Bugo? Range is 11. There's the Sfax and there's the Bugo. Alright, torpedo. Just two different angles, maybe we can land one. Where's the torps from uh, the Pluton? Here. If they don't change their course too much, I might be able to do something. Don't torp that transport. No! <laughs> I clicked it and then I saw the transports or the, the torpedoes were active and I thought, no! <laughs> yes, we're torpedoing a transport with 20 torpedoes. Sunk. Who knows, these things might run long and accidentally hit a heavy cruiser. We're a bit too close, we're gonna back off a little. You guys can take up the slack over on that side. This is cruelty to transports. Yeah, that's a bit much. I mean, how dead would you like your transport? Well, yes, I guess. Very, very, very dead indeed. What I like about the scenario, by the way, is that we're fighting the Chinese. It's usually uh, US versus Japan, or um, you can see British going up against Germany, or French versus Germany, or Austro-Hungary. But it's very, very rarely the Chinese that get picked either as the faction that I'll be playing, or as the enemy faction. And we finally landed some torps on one of their heavies. And she does seem to be suffering from some serious flooding. Hopefully now she can just flood down and we can take that light cru sorry, that heavy cruiser out of the fight. Continue circling. Ammunition is good on the light cruisers. Yeah, we're fine. You guys are not allowed to torpedo, right? No, you're not. Good. There goes another transport. Yep. Oh god, are you... This guy is a bit suicidal, this battlecruiser. It's trying to pen a battleship with 9-inch guns 
against belt armor of, what is that? 13.1 inches plus 118%, leading to a pen chance of about 8%. <laughs> that battleship has to look at you and just blow away you. Well, fire the 17 inch guns and it will blow away the. Le, the bleh, Levret. But for some reason, she's still focused on a light cruiser. The light cruiser, which is at least 15 clicks out. 20. What the hell? This one too? See, I get that their detection isn't that good because they're from 1925. But it's not this terrible. They have to know that there are battle cruisers a mere few kilometers away. But they decide seemingly to ignore it. Let me guess. You have not yet invented speed. Uh, which one, which div are you? Here. Nope, you're still limping around at 24 knots. Detach. Turn away. Increase to 35. Thank you. Ah, oh, shit. She survived. I was hoping to take that heavy cruiser out of the fight. Can we pen it? Somewhat. You guys, I need you to start getting a bit close to the battleships because those are the ones that we really want to sink. And the transports are just mostly a distraction. They're not really that valuable, except for the 75% of enemy ship kills. What? Hold on. Who? The... How'd you pull that off? See, something is up with these torpedoes. They have a range of 12.7 kilometers. And this formation has been pretty steady on their course. They haven't really been within 12 kilometers striking range. But we just hit a battleship almost 22 kilometers away. These torps don't stop at 12.7. They just keep going. And we've just torpedoed the uh, Zheng Guofon. Who now has flooding in one, two, three, four, five, six compartments. And she might struggle with that. How the hell are these torpedoes running so long? I don't mind. I'm just surprised. And I would like the stats to reflect what my torpedoes can do. So that I know what to expect. And so that I can plan around it. Because if my torpedoes have more range than 12-7. Then that means that I can torp from farther away. Except, of course, the game won't really let you. Because it's going to go, nope, sorry, um, I only have a 12.7 kilometer range torp. But it means that if a heavy cruiser is about, let's say, 10 clicks out, and the battleship behind it is 15 clicks out, I might still be able to hit the battleship. By targeting a ship that I don't really want to target, or that I don't really uh, am actually aiming at, if that makes sense. Anyway, we've already gotten rid of two battleships. The others are seemingly unharmed, but... Why the hell this battleship is still focusing on the light cruiser? With a battle cruiser at 8 kilometers out. And another one at 10. Which were closer. I just don't fathom. So I'm going to write this up as another... A bit of a bug... Because this is not how these things should operate. You could even ask the question, should they, be, should they even be able to spot? Because sometimes I can get notifications that the light cruisers are disappearing. Of course, not right now, because they're being spotted by the heavies. Although, they might... Here, lost sight of the Bugo. The heavy cruisers don't know where she is. Interestingly. There goes another transport. Let's see if we can throw our torpedoes against the uh, Liaoning. 
and maybe hit the G1 behind it. Might have to go aggressive there. There goes another transport. I don't get it. This was never supposed to be a turkey shoot. This was supposed to be a David versus Goliath fight. But for some reason or another, the battleships... I don't know, they, they seem a bit broken? They seem like they, for some reason or another, want to target a light cruiser that's 20 kilometers away. With... what sort of a rangefinder you got there? Coincidence 5 rangefinder. They don't carry radar. But... Oh, finally, they've decided to start targeting the battlecruiser. Which one? Oh, this guy is suicidal. Look at that, four and a half kilometers out. I just want to see what this 17-inch gun's going to do to you. 25% chance to hit and going up with every meter that we get closer to the battleship. Boom. Fire on the Clemenceau. That could have been so much worse. Now, the Sfax is getting a bit closer here. Almost within torpedo range. But I'm hesitant to torpedo this battleship because that battlecruiser is... is doing some interesting things, shall we say. And I'm not sure how she's getting away with it either. 59% chance to hit 60. Boom! Floodings. There goes your structural integrity. That's what you get for approaching a battleship to within two kilometers. To be fair to the battlecruiser, they are now getting a better chance to pen. Although, I don't still really value their chances to pen with a four-inch gun. But I guess it's a start. Now, I suppose that the other light cruisers are done chewing up transports. So we might have these guys push in now and see if they can torpedo the battleships. Is there one transport alive? Yeah, the Jingxi. Okay, you guys turn that way. Uh, you guys turn that way and the Galissonnière. I'm going to detach you from the div. You're going to increase speed to maximum and just chase down that uh, transport there. We did just... Yeah, there they are. Uh, here. We did send out torpedoes against the Thong. Hoping to get a hit there, but the Sfax... What did you get hit by? 17 inch. I'm surprised he didn't explode upon impact. I suppose I should be happy that that was probably only armor piercing. Because if that would have been a high explosive, there wouldn't be enough of that light cruise to retrieve to put in a box it just i've i've done it with high explosive against light cruisers there is just nothing left it's just utter butchery what's your speed 26 okay you have an excuse but the pluton does not so pluton increase the flank um i want you to turn away smoke up smoke up because these battleships are coming your way. And that proves an excellent opportunity to try and torpedo them. Unfortunately, the torps here don't look good. But maybe for you, we can make a difference. Jesus, can you get even closer? 600 meters. Their chance to hit is now 100%. But thankfully for that battle cruiser, they can only bring one turret to bear. Because the rest of the turrets are blocked by their own superstructure. What am I watching? Nevertheless... What? Wait. From the perspective of the battleship, they only have a 27% chance to pen the battle cruiser? How? This gun at less than a thousand meter range, can pen 39 inches of belt armor. You have an 11 inch belt, plus 98%. So let's throw that at 22.8. So let's round it up to 23 inch, just for ease. 
you can pan that and change, but I think it's the ricochet angle that's causing issues for the battleship. This is weird. I want to see what happens. Go on. Did you see that? There. Doink! Right off the side of the armor. I think it's the ricochet angle. Because the armor is sort of being reinforced by being at an angle. And that is making it very difficult indeed for the battleship, at least in the current angle. And that angle just changed to do damage against the battlecruiser. Because the moment that that angle decreases, we're going to see that pen chance up go massively. That's the last of their transports? Oh, Liao Ning has detected torps. You did? But, uh, really? I'm not even sure if those were intended for your group. Yeah, they were. Just a while ago. And these things only travel at 36.5 knots. So that's the reason why I, uh, I'm taking a sweet time to actually get a torpedo hit. Thong's getting torpedoed by Dagui. Sfax needs to get out of here. I'm not sure if that's an actually good course to evac. Yep, we got a torp landed against the heavy cruiser. Launing should be flooding. There she goes. She's toast. Excellent. All right, you guys. We were done with transports. So the Le Galissonnière, which was sent out to deal with the last transport, can now come back. But it's actually put me in a bit of a bad position. Because normally I don't mind encircling the enemy. Because it just means you can cut them off. But now I might have to start dodging my own torpedoes. That's a bit more of a risk. That battle cruiser is so screwed. Credit where credit is due though, that battleship was able or that battle cruiser was able to do quite a bit of damage to that battleship. Chance to pen? 40%. Still an average ricochet chance. Interesting. How are the torps looking against the thong? Here they are. That's not the torps from the Pluton. This Pluton was supposed to intercept the other group here. There. Pu Yun. We've seen that those battleships are not that good at defending against torpedoes. They don't see them very well. They do have Sonar 2 though, but still. And the turning circle... Their turning circle is about half of my battle cruiser. Oh, that looks good though. That looks really good. Thong detected enemy torpedoes. Yeah, well... Doink, doink, doink. Six torps. Ho, ho! And Thong explodes. Flash fire. At this rate, there's a small chance that those torps run long and hit the Feng Tian or the Yunnan. These torps that were actually aimed at something else that were aimed at the thong all right pluton oh shit puyun is coming at you directly hmm in that case we're going to try and torpedo the the yia or the jia i'm not sure how the chinese would pronounce that wait you're flooding the battleship Wow. The two inch are even capable of penning the main tower. Two inch guns? They have a pen of 7.2. Conning tower, 13 inch. I'm not sure what exactly they're penning, but. Alright. Hmm. New attack plan. Target Puyun. 
fall back, turn around and try to use the starboard launchers against the other battleship. I'm afraid that there's not that much that I can do to assist the uh, Clemenceau over here. The Leveret is trying to deal with the battle, sorry, with the heavy cruisers, but struggling with that. She will run out of ammo. Pretty soon, too, considering that a 9-inch gun has a really nice rate of fire. Okay, so the Puyun is getting a torpedo salvo from Pluton. Pluton's over there, Puyun's over here, so the torpedo's going to run this way. Which means that all of my light cruisers are going to be at risk. Increase to full speed. So far, the amount of damage that I've inflicted is getting pretty ridiculous. These are supposed to be coastal defense ships. But they're just kicking the enemy's ass. Here are the torps. Is that going to be a threat? No. We're fine. Galissonier, though. You're going to have to need to turn to port a bit. Oh, Puyun is starting to turn. Shit. Means that those torps are no good. Torps in reverse from the other angle. Ten clicks out. We're going to need to get closer there. So far, I haven't lost a single light cruiser. Despite these things are capable of blowing away a light cruiser if they were only to fire high explosive. On Fernet, I'm going to need you to torpedo the uh, Gia. Now, don't look too much at the damage numbers here, because 53k is also including all the damage that I did against their transports. So, yes, I did 53k in damage, but it's not really telling the whole story. Okay, because the uh, Enfernet is coming in at an angle, she's not capable of launching all her torpedoes simultaneously. She's doing that in a few waves. Uh, hard port turn. Starboard launchers against the heavy cruiser... What's your face? Yunnan? The Clemenceau finally sunk after putting up a brave fight against their battleship. And causing, well, some pretty serious damage. The ship seems to have some flooding issues and on top of that did a lot of structural damage. Interesting. It's not at all what I was expecting. Now, this wider torpedo salvo could serve me very well against the Gia, allowing the uh, Du Bourdieu and the Circe to try and torpedo the Puyun. Yeah, the Gia is going to get hit at least once. Yunun decided to do another full turn, but the Feng Tian, not so much. The Galissonier can also deliver another blow. I'm not sure which I could, should consider the bigger threat, the battleships or the, the heavy cruisers. That's one, two, three, four, five hits, six. Yeah, you're done for. Oh, you're done for immediately. Flash fire. Very good. Starboard launch, Puyun. Dubordieu launched all of it. Circe hasn't launched yet. If the Puyun doesn't turn, she's going to be in for a rude awakening. Or, well, maybe not so much an awakening. Maybe that's the wrong phrase. Alright, turn back. Whoa! Feng Tian detected Torps and is immediately swinging around. But with that dramatic course change, she might just run into the other one. Yeah, you're going to have an issue there. Whoa! Wait a minute. Shit, I torpedoed my own. That must have been from the other side. From the Dagi? Pluton. There. 
See, she shouldn't be able to do that. She's 22 kilometers away. And yes, she's heading away, so she should, or she would have arguably been closer. But this is kind of the risk of having your ships actually have more torpedo range than, well, sort of than they should have. You can stop torpedoing the Puyun now, because I think she's going to be dead. She got torps there, there, here. Feng Tian suffers from the torpedo hit. Leaving the uh, heavily damaged Anjuid there and the uh, full health Yunnan. So I think effectively I've won. And I gotta say, it feels like it's a hell of a lot more... Ooh. Uh, it's a hell of a lot more doable, this scenario, than I thought it was. Mostly because the battle cruisers proved to be a bit of a distraction for the enemy ships. And for some reason or another, the battle ships with their 17-inch guns decided that the light cruisers 20 clicks away were more of a threat than the battle cruiser 5 clicks away. Until, of course, they realized their mistake and thought, uh-oh, we're going to have to do something about that. Yeah, you're done for Cool ships don't look at explosions. So. Um, that leaves the last battleship here. Maybe we should let one of the, the, uh, the heavy cruisers survive. Hold on. I gotta keep my own ship safe here. Turn that way. Because it's not the enemy that I should be fearing when it comes to uh, taking damage, it's myself. Maybe I should let one of the heavy cruisers survive and tell the tale. So that the enemy is never going to try and engage our enemy or our, our little island again. Pluton, do not torp. Try to get a bit closer to the uh, damaged battleship there. So far I've lost one light cruiser. To myself. Could have been so much worse. Yunnan still has a lot of ammo. So hoping that she's going to run out of ammo is not quite going to work. She's moving away from the Enfernet, so she's probably not going to get torped. No. Port site launch against the Anjoué. Torpedoes away. Now keep your distance. Flooding? We did that with a six? Yes, we did that with a six inch gun. Alright. I'm not going to argue. What the hell? Look at how much flooding that thing has taken. The Circe needs to get off though. She needs to disengage. Because if I keep these ships alive, they will come back in the next scenario. In the follow-up. There, that should keep that thing at range. Are you turning? No, you're not. But you're a bit slow. Ooh, come on! Ah, damn it. Ah, that would have been so good. Just torping at that battleship, but no joy. So Enfernet is going to have to make another attack run. And this one pumped out all the water. We did drop torps. But whether it's going to be enough to kill that heavy cruiser, I don't know. Now, where are the rest of my ships? Because I have a tendency of just letting them wander all over the place. Pluton is doing an attack run. Enfernet is doing an attack run. Eventually, uh, Bougo... Is quite far away from the rest of the fleet, indeed. Svax is, is uh, uh, retreating. 
you're not really retreating, but you are a bit far away from the battle, and the Circe is retreating. Because they have done what I needed them to do. What's your speed? Probably not more than 12 knots, considering the state of her. Smoke. Oof. Torpedoes away. Starboard side. Target. Anjou. Or Anjou. Uh, Enfernet. Turn away. Turn into port. Because you might be on the receiving end of those. Oh, actually, no. Turn starboard. Otherwise, you're going to be on the receiving end of those things. She just launched some of her torps. I'm not sure if that was the starboard or the port launcher. Port launcher, I think. We still have a lot more of these torps lying around. There's another salvo, and another, and another, and another. Smoke up and get out. Pluton, can you still struggle to get away? 21 knots? I'll take it. Yeah, that should finish her. Unless she pulls some sort of miraculous turn, she should be done for. 11 knots. And the heavy cruiser Yunnan... Yeah, I'm going to let her get away. We can just get the last torpedo kill on the battleship here. And we should. Don't hit me. Thank you. Then we can let one, potentially two of the Chinese ships get away. And tell the tale of how it is not a good idea to invade my island. Because there were torpedoes everywhere. All right, guys, that is, that's going to be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, so far, David versus Goliath was very much in favor of David because my little defense ships and my uh, curiously designed AI assisting heavy or battle cruiser uh, did, well, some damage, 672. But when you look at the other, <laughs> the other ships, like over here, this is the uh, Dubordieu, 24,000 damage with torpedoes. And I gotta say, a respectable amount of damage with a 6-inch, but probably mostly thanks to hitting transports. Anyway, that'll be all. Thank you for watching. If you want to support my channel, if you want to get votes on what scenario should be next, then please consider joining the Patreon program, linked down below in the description. And I just uh, hope to see you tomorrow for the next vid. See you then.